Hey guys, as you can see, the set design has changed dramatically since last week. We here at Weibo Productions have undergone a significant remodeling process. Actually, that's not true. We have moved very, very far away, to university in fact. And by we, I mean me, because I am really the only person carrying all this dead weight. Granted, this channel is just a team of one. But I'm being silly, my goodness. The entire point of this video is to criticize the shortcomings of women's fashion. Let's get to it. As you all know, it sucks, it makes no sense, and it's geared more towards looking good rather than comfort. From the corsets to the mini skirts, the cards have been stacked against us in a never-ending cascade of waves. And that's not to say that men's fashion doesn't have its own shortcomings. I mean, just check out men's fashion circa 1990s with the baggy jeans. And then it made a comeback in 2010 for some reason because saggy pants are absolutely a good decision every single time. But that's an entirely different video for an entirely different time. Here are four things wrong with female fashion. Number one, the impracticality. I am of course speaking of the pocket struggle. Oh my time lords, is it a thing? How am I supposed to hold my keys, lip gloss, phone, iPod, wallet, the still beating hearts of my enemies, my pocket fourth edition cat the hat, my button collection, all ten seasons of friends, and my sunglasses in something only big enough to hold a third of a banana. And don't even get me started on the fake zipper shenanigans going down with jeans, shoes, pants. Who even needs a zipper to nowhere? I mean, seriously, come on, guys. Number two, the whimsical sizes. Women's clothes sizes are meaningless. I am a pants size 6A, according to Gap, 11, according to No Boundaries, a 7 to 8, according to Maurice's, and a 9, according to Walmart. My shoe size ranged from 5 to 7, again, depending on the brand and where I got the shoe and, you know, the face of the moon. Number three. The reveal. The material is most usually thin enough to see anything underneath. And if there isn't anything underneath, you get to give the world a peep show. So the solution most women opt for is to wear multiple layers like first a bra, then a cami, then a tank, then the Nimi and Lion fleet, and then you can finally put on your shirt. The drawback is that's not only the least cost effective solution on the entire planet, it can also be flippin' hot as Arizona in June during a dry spell, wearing full snowsuit, under a full suit of armor, complete with chainmail. My point is, what is the point of a shirt if it doesn't cover jack diddly squat on its own? Number four, the strapless approach. Some girls can pull it off, and then there are some girls that just gradually falls off because gravity is a thing that exists, and their breasticles are too large to be perky enough to sustain a bra, a dress, a bathing suit that's strapless. Someone invest in strapless tech for size D and up. That would be fantastic. I will be forever in your debt. And that's it, potatoes. If you like this video, you can click my face to subscribe, and there's a link in the description to all of my social media, so check that out if you wanna. Click that like button, click that subscribe button, and I'll see you next week.